Dr. Nottheim, just tell me your mm -hmm. role here at the hospital and the importance of hand hygiene in that role. Okay, wrong answer. But kidding aside, today an increased commitment to hand hygiene is now spreading hospital-wide at St. Louis University Hospital, where clean hands are your first line of defense against spreading infection. It's more important because of the kinds of patients that we take care of. We take care of, when I say critical patients, and we consider who comprises those patients, our uh, oncology patients and transplant patients who are not um, healthy enough to fight disease. We've actually had several prominent um, individuals in the St. Louis area who have had hospital acquired infections, so there's been a, been a big focus in the public on this. So we actually have patients who ask us to wash their hands before they touch them. I have had patient families post signs outside their doors asking for um, you to, for caregivers to please wash your hands when you take care of my father, my mother, my son, my daughter. As a level one trauma center, St. Louis University Hospital treats some of the most seriously ill patients in the region. Need further proof of the need to wash your hands before touching a patient? Consider this, the elevator button, the door handle, all the things you touch every day that are touched by thousands of others. What's on their hands? In this environment, all kinds of things could be there. These are actual pictures of hospital acquired infections from C. diff to MRSA. Both can be deadly. MRSA, for instance, can live up to 40, 50 days if it's not adequately cleaned off a surface. So if you touch that surface, then it's on your hands. You can transfer it to yourself if you touch your face. Nearly 2 million individuals in the U.S. develop healthcare associated infections each year, contributing to as many as 100,000 deaths deaths that can be preventable. 15 to 30 seconds to wash your hands and make a difference in a person's life. Patients' lives are in stake, so if you don't have good hand hygiene, the patients will suffer, and also you, you could be potentially be bringing something home to your family. Every member of the healthcare team plays a vital role in fighting the spread of infection. Consider this, an isolation patient who already has an infection. Use only patient-dedicated equipment, so we have equipment that goes in this patient's room and it is for that patient, and that we should not take any charts or any forms into the room. Again, because it's contact precaution, so this is a touch. Uh, you, you spread your uh, organisms by contact, by touch, by coming in contact with either the patient and or the patient's uh, belongings. And you wear a gown and gloves. For ICU staff, these patients can be a challenge. And hand hygiene's the biggest thing. You know, we can put on protective garb and everything, but our hands go everywhere with us. Nurses are on the front lines fighting the spread of bacteria from patient to patient. Hi, Ms. Carter, how are you doing? That's why Jessica Montgomery will sanitize as she enters a patient's room before examining this IV and then washes thoroughly with soap and water before leaving to see the next patient. And they're already sick, so, you know, their immune system are down so it's a lot easier for them to contract something from you. But everyone gets busy. Sometimes it's easier said than done. I do not know a single health care provider that hasn't forgotten. That's big. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal and, and if we can uh, consistently do hand washing we will decrease the transmission of pathogens from patient to patient and hopefully decrease the overall infection rate around the hospital. And everyone plays a role in fighting the spread of germs. I'm a transport here slow. And hand hygiene is important because we move different patients from different floor to floor and you want to transmit nothing to each other patients. First, we wash our hands before we go in. We put gloves on. We do what's necessary in the room for us, sweeping and mopping, pulling trash, wiping rails down. I work in the food service department. Some patients have a little trouble uh, opening up things. So the fork, the utensils, and things like that, I will open up those. And if my hands are dirty, then that's transmitting the germs. Internist Dr. Timothy Rice uses a game to reinforce the hand washing mission with residents. Real uh, character is what you do when no one's watching. So my uh, challenge to you is that if you catch me not washing my hands prior to, immediately prior to seeing the patient and immediately prior after examining the patient, um, then I'll pay you a dollar. 
His hand hygiene game gets the students thinking about what could really live on their hands. Multi-drug resistant organisms that, um, that can cause problems and then we've got sicker patients. We've got patients here that are, you know, um, susceptible, more susceptible to, to di these di particular organisms. Using glow germ shows just how much dirt is left behind even after what you think is good hand washing. What glows blue is still dirty. Recent observations show hand washing compliance is improving. The goal among all staff is 100%. As physicians, we need to set the example, uh, 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 but that's true for the whole healthcare team and even for family members. Family members should also be uh, at least advised that they, they probably should uh, wash their hands before they actually touch or get close to, the, to, to their loved ones. So this is my hand, actually. <laughs> show me it. This is my hand, the left hand right there. So as doctors, nurses, and staff take the hand hygiene pledge, it's becoming part of the DNA of this hospital. Recently, CEO Crystal Haynes and Dean of the St. Louis University School of Medicine, Philip Alderson, joined forces placing their hands in wet cement to show a commitment to hand hygiene set in stone. You have a personal responsibility as a nurse, as a physician, as a transporter, as a healthcare worker, if you see someone who doesn't wash their hands, to go up to them in a very nice way and say, I'm sorry, but could you wash your hands? I really care about my patients and I want you to wash your hands before you go in the room. St. Louis University Hospital is joined with the World Health Organization promoting five moments of hand hygiene. Among them, washing before touching a patient, before an aseptic task, after exposure to bodily fluids, after touching a patient, or after touching patient surroundings. Every patient has uh, uh, their own flora, their own bacteria, and unfortunately sick patients have some additional riders on there, some additional passengers on their skin, some uh, things called pathogens, really serious infections, uh, uh, either viruses, bacteria, sometimes fungi, and unfortunately we can unwittingly take those serious infections from patient to patient if we're not cognizant of that. By washing your hands, you can stop the disease chain. Consider what germs and bacteria come in the door of the busy emergency room at this level one trauma center. We in the emergency room, we use hand washing as well as the personal protective devices such as gloves, et cetera, like that to help prevent you know, the spread of uh, infectious uh, organisms from one patient to the next. And, and you have to be concerned too with the, the inanimate objects that they bring in or the inanimate objects just here in the emergency room, door handles, um, uh, ladies' handbags, because, you know, notoriously ladies will set their handbag on the floor. Germs are opportunistic. It's up to you to keep them from getting the opportunity to infect a patient. Protect our patients. Care for our patients. 15 to 30 seconds to save a life.